Hola buenos dias, Kodjabaika is here and it's the 25th of September 2023. Yeah, so uh, it's autumn here in uh, the old UK. It will be forever autumn, cause you're not here. Apologies for that, but my sons have left home, so it feels a bit like forever autumn. Anyway, getting back to the video, um, I'm riding my KTM 690 Enduro R, named Wolfgang. Hello! that uh, I will have had for exactly three years tomorrow. Now when I purchased the bike we were right in the middle of uh, the UK lockdowns. Uh, I managed to get the bike delivered and then the country locked down for six months so I wasn't able to ride him at all. So I got him actually as a bit of a sanity project because uh, we were locked in the house you're allowed to go out once a day. It sounds like a dream now or a nightmare but uh, that's what happens if uh, you have a referendum in your country. Those in charge let the power go to their head. Everything's the will of the people, of course. That's why they didn't have them in Germany for a long time after uh, you know who. Anyway, let's get back on it. So I got this bike uh, as what I call my lightweight and local project. The idea being that as we couldn't go very far at the time, uh, and I like a nice light bike, I got this bike to do some local riding and a bit of off-road although there's no off-road local to me you have to go 50 miles so I wanted something that would be capable of going along the motorway if necessary and this bike could certainly do that as you shall see in a moment but it's quite a basic bike in many ways uh, we've got no gear um, display we've got no fuel gauge we've got nothing but um, I just set the trip when I fill it with fuel and when it gets to 150 miles I fill up again and that's for a gear display I don't need one I learned to ride long before they existed so they don't bother me uh, I've got a neutral light that's generally enough so if you're old school like me uh, it's got more than enough um, information I did had a voltage meter just for I like to know whether the battery is charging or not because uh, had experience in the past where the state has gone down and that could be trouble particularly if you're on a motorway so I like to have that but well, that was easy to add just fitted in the raid garage tower all of which I'll get on to later let's go over the downsides first of all for there were some downsides now I chose this bike because I wanted something capable of going on the motorway something capable of going off-road um, a bit more than an adventure bike which this has proven to do I've been places on this bike I never would have gone on my 790 adventure or any adventure bike it's easy to pick up because it weighs only 153 kilograms dry and because it's quite a tall bike you can actually lever it up with the handlebars quite easily but uh, it is a tall bike no getting away from it um, I'm 5'10 in my boots and I always say in my boots because I need to have my boots on when I ride this bike even though I've lowered it a little bit but a one inch Kubelik in the back and a low seat I say low it went down by uh, a few millimeters only but um, again I'll get onto that later so the downside is a very tall bike the other downside is and I knew this before I bought it there was a historic fault on the um, clutch slave cylinder and they were known to fail quite quickly and KTM appeared to have its head buried in the sand about it although to be fair to them eventually last year I think it was or 2021 they did do a recall and offered to change it I didn't bother because I'd already fitted an Oberon um, slave, clutch slave cylinder almost immediately that got the bike uh, just as well because after, it, the bike was on about 500 miles when I changed it and the slave cylinder was failing so if you ever get one of these second hand check it's had the recall done 
or at least that it's had an Oberon fitted. I've not had an issue since I had the Oberon fitted, I have to say, it's been fine. Oh. Those are the downsides. Obviously you'll get a lot of people saying oh it's KTM, they're not reliable. I have to say nothing nothing has failed on this bike, not a thing. Nothing at all. And uh, it's well capable of going on the motorway. Here's a motorway. It's big enough. You've got good views, plenty of power. It's got more than enough power for a UK motorway. We're quite a controlled society and everywhere there's cameras now, so you very rarely see people doing much above 70 miles an hour. It's just not worth it. You'll probably get away with 77 and that'll be about it. This bike will do that easily in any gear, um, third upwards and pull, it's got plenty of torque so yeah okay it's quite congested this morning I'm not going far but I have done 200 mile days on the motorway on this bike without any issue whatsoever the wind protection on the stock bike notwithstanding because you don't get any but you do get smooth air obviously I've got a screen on this which uh, again I'll get into later on so they're the downsides, it's a very high bike, very tall, so you sit right on top of it rather than in it, and it's a long way down to the ground. But at my height, with uh, my boots on, because it's so light, I've not had any issues whatsoever. The only time you really notice it is when I swap from my CB500X, which is a lot lower. But I have to say, with the high seat and the lower pegs, it's much nicer on the hips this bike because um, your legs are stretched out more so that's a plus so I think that's my negatives out of the way it's a very basic bike to say little information speedo's not brilliant you do get a bit of condensation in the speedo it being a KTM but at least if I ever have to get a replacement it's not thousands of pounds I think they're a couple of hundred and this one's been fine there's no condensation today Hello? So, as a travel bike, it's quite good, but as I say, I bought it at the time when we weren't allowed to travel. So I called it my lightweight and local project, which is basically what it was, although I did eventually manage to take it across country, I have been round and across the Isle of Man, over the top of the Isle of Man off-road, I have been into Wales and done the Wayfarer, and various other tracks and there's no other bike I would have been able to do that on so it's quite unique in that way the other benefit is that the engine the LC4 engine I think that's been in development for like 25 years so it's pretty well known um, and it's been pretty well tested you're not beta testing an LC4 engine now I had got the bike with the intention of having it till the lockdowns and everything were over and then considering a trade-in against something else so why did I keep it well it got under my skin I have to say mainly because of this <laughs> oh, I love that it's just got such immediate torque, particularly being a single cylinder. Um, the engine on the motorway is smooth, very little vibration. But if you open the throttle, uh, in virtually any gear and at any speed, you get that jackhammer uh, response. If you do a whiskey throttle, you will get some jackhammer style vibrations, but they're not the fuzzy vibrations, they're just fun. Another good thing about this bike is it's got excellent suspension, far better than my CB500X. This road is dreadful that I'm on at the moment, and in the 500X I actually get thrown out of my seat. That never happens in this on this bike because uh, the suspension is just better. It's quality and uh, it's adjustable, so I've set it up for myself on a pretty soft setting actually, but all the rebound and everything is adjusted and Although that's a very, very, very bumpy road, there was no second there where I felt like I was going to be jettisoned from the seat. And every time I ride my 500X down there, it's like a booking bronco. 
So I love the suspension, I love the engine, I love the thrill of it, I love the light weight of it that I know if it goes over I can pick it up. Uh, it does fall over rather well, uh, it being a dirt bike with all plastic panels, soft plastic, not brittle plastic, so unless you throw it down the road at uh, 100 miles an hour you have a good chance of uh, picking it up sans damage. I've only dropped this bike twice, um, both times in off-road situations at uh, no speed whatsoever, which is another story which I'll get onto when I park up. So when it came to considering a new bike uh, for my big birthday, Wolfgang may have been traded in um, because I'm not a wealthy person but I just couldn't do it I, <laughs> I didn't want to let go yet I'm not ready I'm ready okay thank you Wolfgang uh, to let go because I just enjoy it so much every time I go out on it I just love it so <laughs> I've kept it <laughs> as I say I've had no issues with it it went through um, what in the UK we have an MOT test which stands for Ministry of Transport test and it sailed through uh, a couple of months back I did do a little short video on that no issues whatsoever I've had no mechanical issues at all I find the brakes are great uh, the Brembo brakes they're great uh, I mean it's a dirt bike so obviously they're not quite as good as a supermoto version but they're perfectly adequate for me fuel economy is good not that that would bother me because it's a, a bike for fun uh, I have got many videos on all these different aspects including fuel uh, fuel cap various other things if you check the playlist at the end there's all sorts on there when I own a bike I tend to do an ownership experience uh, set of videos And I suppose, yeah, the other downside for a lot of people would be that the seat, the stock seat particularly, is uh, a bench, as you would expect on a dirt bike. Yeah, so it's got a bench seat, which has the advantage that you can move around on it. Look, I can sit right at the back, like this, or sit right forward, if you're off-road. Uh, but the disadvantage is if you're going long distance, then obviously um, it's a bike you're going to be stopping more. I know that when I rode back from my sister's on the 500X I could more or less do the entire journey without stopping and on this one I tend to stop two times. Um, but funny enough the journey time wasn't really that much different, about 10 minutes so I didn't feel any less tired or more tired on this bike or the other bike. It's about a 200 mile motorway journey as I say. The main thing about this bike that I love, I will show you in a second, and it's um, quite contagious. When you're riding a, a 500X, which only has 47 horsepower, and you get on this bike, now I'm in second gear, doing uh, 21, 22 miles an hour, and you just open the throttle. Woo! Whoa! Quick shifter! Whoa. So I've got trash control one there, and the front wheel lifted off the ground a little bit. Um, if I took that off or put it into two, <laughs> you would uh, go wheelie all day, basically. It's just so much fun. It's exhilarating and I love it. And that's why you've stayed. I love you, Wolfgang. Thank you. He doesn't reciprocate. Too tough for that. And also, I should mention that the bike does come with a quick shifter. Uh, track control, I think it's got some lean angle ABS on it uh, so you've got off-road traction control, you can turn it all off and you can get a dongle, turn everything off and the, don the dongle will remember how you set your bike up I don't bother with that because I found the uh, off-road, if you put it in off-road mode the front wheel ABS and off-road mode is absolutely brilliant for me, some people say oh, I don't use it off-road but I found it to be fantastic so I tend to ride it on the road in one, ride it off the road in two. That's uh, been good enough for what I 
have required. And as I say, that there's no extra cost. You don't pay for that afterwards like the new KTM's. It comes with it. Anyhow, I shall pull in down here in a moment and um, show you what I've done to the bike because there's quite a lot. I know a lot of people who've watched my channel will know this stuff already, but there's always new people asking me about uh, various things and the chances are I've already covered them. So, enough to say that uh, Wolfgang did not get traded in. Yet. <coughs> I heard that. Yeah, I said yet, you know. Also, I love this bike for coming out into the countryside. Although all the farmers uh, give you wary looks, they think that you're planning to go <laughs> rough shot across their land. <laughs> um, it being bright orange, also, it screams KTM. Right, go down here pull over let's have a look it's definitely a Jacqueline Hyde bike this but all, all depending on how you um, as a rider do the throttle if you want to be whiskey throttle it could be uh, it can be a lot more exciting but if you're just smooth on the throttle it tends to be vibe free it's got balance of shafts they really did a good job with this bike, given a, I think it's the biggest single cylinder production engine on a motorbike in the world currently. And it's nothing like the old thumpers used to be. Very smooth, until you yank on the throttle obviously. Then you get that jackhammer torque that makes it so much fun actually. So, kind of get the best of both worlds. Anyway, let's pull over and have a look at him. I love this bike on these little twisty back roads. Oh look, we've got conkers in the road. Much slowed down, they might be spiky, I don't want any punctures. Oh yeah, that's another downside of this bike. As stock, it comes with uh, inner tubes. Being a dirt bike, you'd expect it, I suppose. But I don't like inner tubes. I get called all the names under the sun for it, but I don't like inner tubes, so guess what? Yeah, so there he is, Wolfgang von KTM 690 Enduro R, and uh, he's some of a bike. He's he's some bike, in my opinion. So let's go over what didn't work first of all, and it may, you know, your results may vary, but uh, what didn't work for me was having inner tubes. So I invested in some uh, SM Pro XL wheels, and then had them. Um, we go it's got the airtight system which is basically copying the ktm there's a vulcanized rubber band inside over these rims and then you fit your tubeless tires uh, very easy to fix i uh, always carry puncture repair kit and a compressor and we've had the uh, as compressor several opportunities to uh utilize that once on this bike and once on Dr. John's bike, so I always carry that, and that's why I always have tubeless tyres. Um, I know the arguments for off-road riding, uh, you're better off with, uh, you know, with airing down and all the rest of it, but uh, I've got to go a long way before I get to off-road, so I'll take the risk of knocking the tyre off the rim than I will of getting a puncture on the motorway, and so far um, I haven't had any problems off-road, but I have had a puncture on the motorway. So, that's one thing that I changed um, because I wasn't happy with it with the stock bike. I've still got the wheels, but um, I've got tubeless um, secondary wheels on. Very, very expensive. I'm not sure I'd do it again. And it was the reason why I didn't bother to get the trans out because I knew I'd have to go through all that again and I'd lose this bike to, to get that bike. So, there you go. Yeah, so you can see the seat, which is also uh, quite uncomfortable this is a concept seat concept seat and it's a low one so it's wide here so if you're going a long way you can sit here it's quite comfortable because you get a lot more support on your buttocks and uh, i've also got a cheap mesh cover on that which i got off amazon for about 20 quid please don't ask me for the link you have to look in um i don't know it changes all the time they're just a cheap probably chinese thing i think it's about 20 pounds 
it's gone on okay I just measured it bought a generic one and it's fitted fine another thing that uh, has worked has not been so good is that I used to have the Outback Motortech crash bars on it uh, the bike has been over twice at zero speed and one time it fell on some rocks which I couldn't understand the other time it fell on basically just some soil when I got home I checked the bars and I think the one on this side had cracked well, uh, where it mounts there fortunately no damage to the frame so they are made to break before the frame which is good but it was a very small crash so I've not bothered to put them back on or buy some more instead I've just relied on the triple clamp covers which have worked fine I do take them off every few months and clean behind because you can lose your paint if salt and thing gets inside them they do need to be taken off whatever coverage you've got and clean behind and then I spray it with silicon spray the big investment of course was the uh, besides the wheels it's very expensive was a very expensive raid garage fairing which has got proper LED lights um, I tend to since I've had those on I've noticed that very few cars pull out in front of me so it seems to make the, it seems to make the bike quite visible no you don't it's been very good uh, it does give you a lot more wind protection but as I say it's not perfect you do get some on the top of your crash helmet but it's not too turbulent um, the one downside of it that I don't like is because the cable management on this particular version I think the newer version might be better I think this is Raid Garage 4 you, it restricts the handlebar movement just a tad I had to adjust the end stops just to uh, stop the cables being trapped and things uh, but it's past its MOT and it was okay um, well given that you know I am tempted to actually take the fairing off and put it back to stock to have the full movement given that I'm probably not going to be using this for any long distances anymore now that I've got a second bike but so far I just love the stance of it I love the lights I love everything about the looks of it so the chances are it will stay as it is you can see that I didn't bother to fit indicators here you can fit them here they provide some which didn't work but you can put the stock ones back on I just went for the Bart Buster indicators up on the handguards and um, they've been fine past them OT that's all that matters I've got heat grips which I think were Apollo or Coso Apollo but they're exactly the same as the UK Ultimate Add-ons one I'm guessing I don't know the Ultimate Add-ons have just had them rebadged because I've got the Ultimate Add-ons ones on my 500X and I've got these ones on this bike so um, they look the same to me they look identical everything about them is the same so heat grips with an integrated button because I don't like having a separate button I want to keep everything down to the minimum you'll notice the stock mirrors have gone I've got the uh, flip out mirrors from Rottweiler the actual flip out mounts and they are I think these are arrow mirrors uh, on Rottweiler mounts bike's been over as I say a couple of times and uh, they've survived without any issue the wings exhaust of course highly recommended it's in my view the best exhaust out there for this bike it's so hot with the stock exhaust that if you replace it with the wings one the heat's gone and it sounds better it's very very loud actually I've got a kit in it to reduce the volume uh, videos of course in the links at the end I've got Bosley foot pegs slightly lower and wider just to give you that comfort as I say it's a nice seat to peg ratio when you're riding along if you've got dodgy hips like I have a lot of the stuff I've got is Perimoto Perimoto he's a rider he makes things for his own bikes he had one of these bikes everything's tested um, you won't be able to see but that's his carrier he also provides um, the ability to mount Krieger um, soft luggage to the back so if I do go away for a few days I can take quite a lot of luggage with me it's a 36 litre um, saddlebag setup that fixes to some loops at the back here which I won't be able to video but of course there is a video on it uh, and pff, I've got a wasp in my helmet <laughs> a bloody wasp uh, and that's worked fantastic I got the Scots uh, damper on, which is very good and adjustable. Uh, so I've had no morning. 
I've had no uh, tank slappers at all. As I say, as a bike, it does nearly everything I want. The only thing it doesn't do is long distance comfort. There's no getting away from it. I bought it as a lightweight and local bike. That's what I use it for. I'm about 10 miles from home, probably 15 actually, and um, feeling good on this bike. I could probably ride it all day, then go home. I wouldn't necessarily want to be riding it day after day, although plenty of people do. If you watch um, the Stinky Boots channel, I think they've taken a couple of these all over Europe and beyond. So uh, have a look at them. I'll try and put a card up if you're interested in that and there's lots of other people who do some <laughs> really brutal off-road in this country on these bikes far more than I am capable of now physically I couldn't do it so it's a very very capable off-road bike it's got WP Explore forks it's got plenty of adjustment at the back it's a proper machine and with plenty of power on tap so I love it so Wolfgang Happy birthday for tomorrow. I hope I've covered everything. If not, check the video list um, at the end or uh, in the description, wherever I've put it. I'll probably do, put it in both places. And have a look, because just about everything I've done is documented. The other thing I haven't done yet is I haven't done the uh, canisters and things, um, deletes on those. Haven't bothered. Might do one day, but at the time being, I'm not going to bother. Oh, one other thing that... Um, I should mention there's a lot of people who've got the same tail tidy that I've got which is just one off eBay uh, that has rusted basically it's painted the paints cracked salt water off the winter roads has got in and rusted it so I've just sprayed it with some uh, ACF 50 uh, probably won't be able to see it it's uh, in here's a bit of rust on that bracket so if you've got one of those just keep your eye on it um, it's strong as anything. I mean, it, you know, it takes years to rust through, but it's just something to be aware of as an aftermarket part. Once the paint um, cracks on it, it will start to rust. So I could take it off and repaint it. Maybe we'll do in the winter. Right, time to ride some more, methinks. Yeah, so three years on, three years tomorrow. I'm quite surprised that I still own the bike. <coughs> Sorry? Nobody owns me! Okay, Wolfgang, sorry. Um, that we're still together. That's better! Um, I think that's just a testament to the fact that I love it. It's not for everybody. A lot of people would hate this bike, I think. But I've always uh, hankered after her as a youth. Uh, XL500 by Honda. A friend of mine had a Honda XL500 and I never had the money to afford one. So I think this is a bit of an old man's... Uh, <laughs> An older guy's uh, fantasy um, made real. That's probably why I like it so much. But it's so much better on the road than uh, those old bikes. You know, you, you can quite easily, as I say, do long distances on it. Although I'd choose not to. Uh, when I went to Scotland, I went on the 500X. So that tells you. I personally, at my age, with my um, hips and back problems and neck problems, I probably wouldn't take this... All the way up to Scotland uh, now but I take the 500X so that's the difference so my 500X is sort of a long-range bike this is a lightweight and local bike and um, that's the way I see it for me if I was younger I think I'd just ride it everywhere I wouldn't bother I guess <laughs> that's older age for you the channel's called Codger Biker after all there's a bit of a hint there so you can see there's uh, there's things everywhere. I've forgotten like Perimoto heel guards and uh, luggage straps. Um, deleted the foot pegs. So um, yeah, the, the, as I say, if there's anything particular you want to know about, check the video channel. I've got a replacement fuel cap because I don't like the one with the key. It feels like the key's going to snap off. Uh, so most people put change that. Right, let's do a little bit more riding and um, hopefully get this video up. If not tomorrow, then today. If not today, then not too long from now because uh, it's our third year anniversary. Let's go. If we were married, Wolfgang, I think there's a particular name for uh, third gear, third year wedding. We're not married. We're never getting married.
Yeah, well, okay, I wasn't, I was only joking, I'm already married. Yes, but just so you know, that can't happen. Yeah, as I say, he's very uh, bad tempered, but uh, I think it's a defence mechanism. He knows that at some point, one day, he's getting traded in. <laughs> but it's not just going to be any time soon. So don't worry, Wolfgang. Let's chillax. Let's explore. That's what you do best. Woo! <laughs> oh, I know, that never gets old. Yeah, so I've had no mechanical issues whatsoever with this bike, as I say. Uh, just coming up to 6,000 miles, I should have said. Well, I'm over 6,000 miles, I think. Uh, which means the valve check is due. And that'll probably be the next job when I get round to it. Yeah, so riding around these country lanes is the reason I love this bike so much. It's made for it. I have had aggressive tyres on it. For off-road stuff uh, at the moment i've got some 80 20 less aggressive tires which just work well on this sort of uh, back road environment with mud gravel dirt and enough grip for a roads and motorways so a good compromise if i lived in an area where i got a lot more off-road then um, i would definitely be putting the 50-50 tyres back on and getting out into the woods but we just don't have that environment over in the UK there's less and less off-road uh, and it's further and further away so we have to um, be happy with the country lanes which happily enough for me that's where I love to ride. No bike does it better than this one. <laughs> so, hope that was of some use to you. It's a three year review. Although six months of those, um, I wasn't actually allowed to ride him. The first day I was allowed to ride him, I got stopped by the police. I refer you back to the statement I said at the beginning about uh, authoritarian country we are becoming. So on that note, from me and Wolfgang. Not from me! Okay, from me. <laughs> Fudge Biker is out. How's the people?